Welcome to NAC. This is Resurrection Sunday. It's a good day to be at church. It's a good day to be in the presence of God. Because it just so happens that Jesus is not dead yet. He has risen from the day. I'm super happy. I'm Pastor Kapongo. I'm one of the pastors here at NAC and I'm glad that you managed to join us this Sunday for Resurrection Sunday. Thank you for bringing your family members. Thank you for bringing your friends. Thank you for coming to the presence of God. I have a great privilege. I have a great honor to have Dr. Pei, a man who needs no further introduction. Dr. Pei, come up and it's for the next 15 minutes, he's going to give us the word of God. And I know that God will do us uh, good. Um, doing this morning you ask me how I'm doing I'm living the dream <laughs> you know so you know this morning I was I was uh, I was getting on the elevator and I saw there were like a couple of people standing there in the front door and one guy looked like he had a bad day and there's a mother with two of her children I said good morning the guy looked at me like I said how you doing he didn't answer and then so we got on the elevator and, uh, you know, as he got up first and then the lady and the two children asked me, what's wrong with him? You see, it's not, you know, uh, it doesn't take too much to be nice. Some people live their lives, it's like there's something wrong, like, and they cannot even say good morning. But we have so much to be thankful for. How many of you know his reason, just the fact that he's risen today. You should have your best attitude. Come on, you should have your best energy because Jesus is risen. All right. You may be seated. You may be seated. Well, it's just, it's just been awesome just the last couple of days being here uh, in Ottawa with you guys. And how many of you were here for the, the, the other meetings? You were here Thursday. Anybody was here Thursday? Okay. Uh, any, any of you were there uh, Friday? Anybody came Saturday for the business seminar? How many, how many of you were there for the young people seminar? Well, if you all, how many of you were not there? Well, if, you, if you're not there, you didn't miss anything. Uh, you only missed like half of your life. <laughs> I encourage you to go back and to listen to some of the stuff. It was really, you know, master class on different topics, you know, business breakfast. Go back and listen to it. I think it will be a blessing to you. I so appreciate, you know, Dr. Misho, Pastor Sissy, and the staff just of the... I mean, yes, you can do better than that. Because, of course, I'm here because of God, but, you know, I'm here because of them, because they invited me first to come here. So if you love what God has been doing, you should be grateful towards them. And I'm thankful for the staff, just the hospitality has been just amazing. Uh, so thank God, thank God. Okay, let's go to the Word of God today. I have no translator, so, you know, fast your seatbelt. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Uh, Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door, somebody say, and a door, was opened to me by the Lord. Somebody say, by the Lord. Who opened the door? The Lord. Amen. First Corinthians 16, verse 9. For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. And then we're going to read one more and jump into it. Revelation chapter 3, uh, verse 7. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these things, says he who is holy. He was true. He who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. All right, let's, let's stand up one more time. May the Lord bless the reading of his word today. Stand up one more time if you can. And I want us uh, today to uh, raise both of our hands towards heaven 
And let's make this prophetic uh, decoration together. Together. Raise your hands towards heaven. I want you to say this with me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. I boldly declare that I believe in the supernatural. I believe in miracles. This morning, Lord, I ask you to give me eyes to see and ears to hear. In the name of Jesus, a heart to receive, a will to obey, and faith to act. In the name of Jesus, I take my position in Christ and I take authority over every spirit that does not confess the name of Jesus. I command them to leave this place and I declare that this place is an open heaven. The Spirit of God is free to move. The angels of God are ascending and descending. They are going to and fro to execute the commands of God's Word. Preach, Holy Spirit. Teach, Holy Spirit. Prophesy, Holy Spirit. Heal the sick, God. Do what only you can do. And take all the glory in the matchless name of Jesus. Can you bend with a shout and say amen? Amen. 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 Before you sit down, tell the person next to you and say, God can open doors. (laughs) Hallelujah. Tell them this is your season. This is your season for an open door. You may be seated. You may be seated. Yeah. uh, I'm so excited to share this message today. If you're looking for a title, is we're going to talk about the mystery behind closed doors and, and how to use the master key to open the, the mystery behind closed door, the mystery behind closed doors. Um, I think it is important for us as children of God to, that when we serve God, that we develop a spiritual sensitivity you know the scripture said that by prophet God deliver Israel out of Egypt by prophet um, Israel was saved the prophet did not deliver them but God used that prophetic dimension they had a sensitivity of the spirit uh, to be able to align themselves with what the spirit of God was saying and as a result of that they had what I call a prophetic advantage and the Bible says that the sons of Issachar were wise because they understood the time and the season and they knew what Israel are to do so Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 says and God said Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs. Somebody say, as signs to mark. Somebody say, to mark. To mark sacred times, days, and years. So, in other words, there is a mark that God places in times, in days, and years. And, uh, Jewish people, they understood that, that, that the calendar was strategic in terms of revealing the mark that God has placed in a certain season. And so, and the way the, way the Jewish people look in the original Talmud, uh, uh, liter- Hebrew literature, literally, you know, they didn't look at letters and numbers like you and I look at letters and numbers because the numbers are actually connected to letters and they're actually connected to pictogram and pictures and they have significance. So there is a certain mark that God has placed in times and seasons and that we have to have a sensitivity in the spirit to know what kind of mark God has placed in a particular season. Ah, to everything there is a season. There is a time for every purpose under heaven. So in the Jewish calendar, we are in the year 5784. 5700 simply means the millennium. May it be the year of. Uh, 80, we are in the decade of 80. 
it's pay, pay is mouth, just like my last name, that's what it means, mouth, face, breath, three, the year we just completed, it's gamel, it's camel, it's the year of the camel, camel means the bounty carrier, the burden carrier, the one who brings the repayment, and fold, the year we're in now, is dialect, it's actually the picture of a door. So this, the mark that God has placed in this season is the mark of an open door. And that when the Hebrew people read it, you know, it's like the tree is chasing after the foal. All right? So the bounty carrier is chasing after the foal. And foal there, that led the door, it also represents the picture of a poor man standing at the door in a place of need going forward and having uh, uh, an, an attitude of humility, understanding, being a poor man, understanding that he has stewardship and not ownership, that what he has does not belong to him, but it belongs to God. And so when the Hebrew people read it, the tree is chasing after the fall. The bounty carrier, the camel, the one who brings the payment, is chasing after the poor man going through the door. I want you to realize that the mark that God has placed in this season is the mark of an open door. Paul said, God, open up a door for me. And I'm here to decree and declare that this is a season where God is opening up doors for you. Financial doors, spiritual doors, doors of wealth, doors of relationship. And the bounty carrier, the camel, the one who brings the reward, the one who brings the harvest, is chasing after a poor man, going through a door to bring breakthrough, miracle signs and wonders. The word door, door, it means access point of an opportunity. Hallelujah. A door, you know, brings you, it brings you into an opportunity. Every opportunity has a door, you know, and it can be an entrance to a new dimension. Somebody say a new dimension. Oh, yes. You know, I don't know if you guys, many years ago, you watched a sitcom called Superman. Clark Kent was a regular guy who came through he opened the door of a telephone booth. He went in in one dimension through a door. But he got on the, on, the, on the other side in another dimension. He was Superman. Paul said in Galatians chapter 1, I went up by revelation. God is about to open a door in this season and shift you into another dimension with revelation. Oh, John the revelator saw a window open in the heaven and he heard a voice saying, come up higher and I will show you more. God is about to open up things in the arena of the spirit that will move you higher, spiritually move you higher into a new place. Can somebody shout glory? So in Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 3, here's God speaking to the Israelite. You have been wandering around this hill country long enough. Somebody say long enough. He said turn north. Somebody say turn north. You've been wandering around this hill country long enough. In other words, you've been stuck. <laughs> been stuck. It's like somebody pour ready mix concrete on you and you're limited in your mobility. You can't move forward. You want to break out, but you can't. You're stuck in the place. Some people today are stuck, stuck in a job they hate, but they need the money. Stuck in a city where they want to move away from, but there's no opportunity. Stuck in a relationship that doesn't work, but they can't get out. Stuck in an illness. Stuck in a condition in their mind. Stuck in an addiction. But God said you've been around this hill long enough. Move north. You know when they say the stock market go, it's going south, south is a bad condition. When they say that, that, that your health is moving south, is a bad condition. But when they say move north, it simply means you're moving into a place of breakthrough. You're moving into a place of acceleration. You're moving into a place of deliverance. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God is opening up 
up a door to someone that has been stuck and he's saying move north someone that has been tired spiritually economically relationally geographically statistically in the same situation God is opening up a door for you to move north come on the camels are coming the bounty carrier is coming the one who carry the reward is coming and God is opening up a door for you to step in a place of breakthrough miracles and signs and wonders I wonder if Mr. Amen has left the building I wonder if Mr. Hallelujah is here today so the question then becomes if God has placed the mark of an open door you got to understand why is it that God opened up doors Paul said a door has been opened to me by the Lord. Why would God open doors? You need to understand this. Number one, God opened doors for life work. Somebody say life work. Oh yes, God wonders support God's work. Hello? God's wonders support God's work. So it, this ain't just about you getting a new car or a new house. Yes, the pipe that piped the water is going to be wet. But there is a purpose. <laughs> God opened a door for Paul to go to Ephesus. And when, God, when Paul got to Ephesus, he became an instrument of healing, deliverance, and breakthrough for the people of Ephesus. In other words, God opened a door for Paul so that Paul went to Ephesus and opened a door for the people in Ephesus. How? Ah, when God opened up a doors for you, it's not just about you. It is so that you can turn around and open doors for other people. Come on, somebody. Hey, this ain't just about you. It's about even the next generation. How ah, one generation will praise you to the next. Uh, Fourteen generations uh, between David and the deportation of Babylon. Fourteen generations from the deportation of Babylon. Come on, God is opening up a door for you so you can open up a door for the next generation. God opened up a door for life work, but God opened up doors so we can be life witness. Someone say life witness. Oh, yes. You know, there are uh, 8 billion people living in the world. And among the 8 billion people living in the world, 2.4 billion people proclaim to be Christians. If you take into account that many of those who proclaim to be Christians today are just nominal Christians. Christians in name only. Hello? That means that our number is even lower. That means we have a monumental task to reach this world. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Now, you know, many of you may not call to travel the world like some of us do. But when it, talk, when it talks about nations, that Greek word for nation is ethnos, which means people's group. There's a nation in your neighborhood. There's a nation around your job. There's a nation. And listen, the, your world is the road you travel to every day. Going to work. The people you meet. That's your nation. That's your world. And you're supposed to reach the ethnos in your nation. Hello? Hello? Now, in the United States, the FBI has a program called the Witness Protection Program. When you've been a witness of something and your life is in danger, they will move you into a certain location in plain sight and change your identity. And people will see you, but they don't know who you are, but you are under the Witness Protection Program. I'm concerned that there are a lot of Christians that are in a Witness Protection Program. You know, nobody knows that you're even saved. You don't share your faith with people. Hello? A pastor was greeting people coming into the congregation, you know, in the four year in the morning and say, welcome. I want to encourage you to be part of the army of the Lord. I want to encourage you to be part of the army of the Lord. So two guys walked in and one guy said, you know what, sir? I'm already part of the army of the Lord. And then he said, how come? The pastor said, how come we only see you here at Christmas or Easter? The man said, it's because I'm part of the secret service. Hello? Come on. Listen. You need to come out of that witness protection program. St. Francis Assisi said, preach the gospel. If it's necessary, use word. Speaking is the last part of being a witness. 
Paul said, you are living epistles. Some of you, you are the only Bible that people will read. And they will read it not when you speak, but they will read it based on your behavior. Preach the gospel the way you go to work. Preach the gospel the way you love your wife. Preach the gospel the way you love your children. Preach the gospel the way you dress. Preach the gospel based on your work ethic. If it's necessary, use word. Somebody shout, I am a witness. Oh my God, God opened up a door so you can be a life witness. So when people see you, some of you are the only Jesus that people will see. Let your light so shine for you are salt and light a city on a hill. That's why God wants to bless you with favor, with money, with power. So when you show up, you can shine for Jesus. Arise and shine. Your light has come the glory of the lord is risen upon you deep darkness has covered the earth but kings shall come to the bright of your rising somebody shall glory shall glory three times he's opening up a door for life work he's opening up a door for life witness but you got to understand the mystery behind closed doors and how to use the master key to open some doors because if you don't understand the mystery behind closed doors you might reach to open doors that needs to stay closed and first of all you got to understand that all doors somebody shout all doors are closed by default hello that the default position of doors is closed how many of you came here driving a car how many of you left your car open how many of you left your house open as you came to church this morning listen closed doors are the default positions of door even in heaven where there is no evil they have doors and doors are closed what does that mean? It simply means that when you see a closed door, you should not be intimidated by the fact that the door is closed. Because that is a default position. That means before a door is open, the door is first closed. <laughs> and I am not intimidated by closed doors. And you also have to understand that sometimes the difference between you where you are and what God wants you to have is a closed door the scripture said that in Luke 11 that a friend came to see his friend in the middle of the night saying my friend has I have a visitor that came and I have nothing to put in front of him you know I need to put something in front of him and the other friend said you know what I'm already in bed with my children we're already sleeping. Listen, not that what the other person needs is not available. It's just that the door is closed. And he said, listen, his friend will give it to him. Not because he is his friend, but because he is persistent. Hello? So sometimes what you need is not that it's not available. It's just that there's a shut door in front of you. Listen to the parable of the virgin in virgins in Matthew chapter 25. The Bible calls the virgin, there are ten virgins, there are five foolish ones, five wise ones. All of them were virgin, means they were virtuous. And they had oil. Oil speaks of the anointing. But five did not have enough oil. And because of the delay of the bridegroom, the oil was finished. And so when they asked the other five that had enough oil to let them borrow some oil, they said, go back to the one who sell the oil. In other words, if you lose the anointing, if you lose the power, go back to the one who supplied the power and get more power and you can get the power back. But when they came back, the door was shut. And even in the presence of the anointing, 
Even though they were virtuous, they were virgin, they got the anointing, they got the oil, they got the power, the all the door was still shut. Oh my gosh, sometimes even being anointed is not enough. There are people who are anointed, there are people who are gifted, there are people who are talented, but yet the thing that stopped them from going to the next level is that there's a door that is shut. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but God sent me here with a prophetic word that if you are prepared, if you are gifted, and you are anointed, get ready in the season because God is about to open a door for somebody in Odawa. The camels are coming. The bounty carrier is coming. The one who carry the reward is coming. The one who carries the payment is coming. And God is about to open a door financially, spiritually, a door of favor, a door of grace and God is about to move you from zero to breakthrough the second thing you got to understand is that doors are closed to manage and restrict access until permission is granted this is a system for doors that is designed to prevent abuse now many of you are professional people over here if you ever show up at a doctor's office or at a company's office and you want to, you want to meet the CEO, the president, the boss, there's usually somebody there, a middle person. They don't really have power. They're just, just there to manage entrance and access. And sometimes they're very they, they're insecure and they, they, their power has gone to their head. So they have a little attitude. If that's you, please don't raise your hand. This is not an auto call. Do you have an appointment? If you don't have an appointment, the boss can't see you today unless you have an appointment. Well, but somebody else who has an appointment, when they come in, they get treated different. Have a seat, please. The boss will see you in a few minutes. Hello? Now, having said all of that, if you have a divine appointment, you may not have an appointment in the natural, but God can set it up. You know, I used to play basketball. There's something called an alley hoop. When the bas a player would just throw the ball close to the basket and you jump and take it and dunk it. Sometimes God will set you up. Have you ever walked coming to a door that has a sensor? The door looked closed before you got close to it. But somebody has gone ahead of you and wired the door with a sensor so the door will respond to your presence. That's how a divine appointment works. Come on. You are not on the schedule, but you show up and God gives you favor and open up a door. He said, write the vision and make it plain. Habakkuk chapter 2. So that he that read may run. Hey, he that, run, he that read may run. The vision will not lie. It is for an appointed time. Wait for it. Though it tarry, it shall come to pass. And that word wait in the Hebrew language is actually the word ambush do you know when you're you're setting up an ambush that means you have to be ready <laughs> you have to be ready for the opportunity because when the opportunities show up if you're not ready the opportunity will pass uh, i wish somebody could play that music for mission impossible you know you gotta be ready because when preparation meets opportunity destiny is born i say when preparation meets opportunity destiny is born so in other words waiting time is not wasted time it is preparation time when you are not having something to do don't think it's wasting time get ready because your turn will come but you gotta be ready because god will set you up with an appointment with destiny and open up a door hey so doors are closed 
to manage and restrict action, access, until permission is granted. Here's another one for you. We talk about the mystery behind closed doors. Doors are closed to add value. Hello? To the product. So, sometimes this simply means that when God is preparing you, there are moments which you're going to experience isolation. But that isolation is for preparation before elevation. Because while the product is being made, there's a seal on the product. Isn't it the truth that even when you order a product, and if it's delivered to you, there's a disclaimer sometimes that says that if, this, if the seal is open, do not use. Return to the manufacturer. Because a seal, a closed seal, is what gives value to the product. And so remember, when the widow came to the prophet Elijah, she said to him, my servant, my husband, your servant, is dead. And he know that he feared the Lord. But now the creditors are coming. And they want to collect my children. It's one thing for you to miss payments on your car and they come to repossess it. It's one thing for you to miss payment on your house and they come to foreclose it. But it's a whole different ball game if the creditors are coming for your children. So that was a difficult situation. The prophet said to her, what is it that you have in your house? She said, I have a jar and a little oil. He said, go out and borrow a vessel. Don't just borrow a few. But when you come in, I'm about to perform a miracle. Make sure you shut the door behind you and your children and let the oil begin to pour. Let the miracle start to work. Your reason why you need to close the door, don't let them see you while the product is being prepared. Because later you're going to have to go out and sell the oil <laughs> and pay your debt and leave on the rest. There's a strategy with this miracle. But while I'm working and while you're making the product, don't let people see you. Because if they see you while the product is being made, they're not going to put value on the product. You got to go into isolation for preparation before elevation and manifestation come on somebody and sometimes when God is pouring the oil on you he's gonna shut the door and put you into a place of isolation Elisha thought he was the only prophet left when Jezebel was killing the prophet but Obadiah feared the Lord and Obadiah hid a hundred prophets by groups of 50 in the cave feeding them bread somebody say bread the word feeding them water somebody say water the spirit so hiding in the cave it was isolation for preparation where the cave where they were being fed bread and the word for preparation the whole saga of Jesus in Nazareth the reason why the people in Nazareth did not put value on the product, on the anointing. It's because they saw him while he was being made. Luke 2 said the child grew in wisdom and stature, in favor with men and with God. So they marvel at his teaching, but then they say, wait a minute. Don't we have his father here, his brothers here? Listen, familiarity breeds contempt. The reason why people do not validate what God is doing in your life is because some people around you are around you because they're connected to your history. They have taken a snapshot of a moment in your life when you were not yet developed. You were not yet mature. And they refuse to honor what God has placed upon you because they saw while the product was being made. That's why sometimes God will isolate you. 
put you in the cave ah feeding you bread and water and developing your gift don't mistake the isolation for deny or rejection it's a season of preparation for elevation the Bible says that John the Baptist stay in the wilderness until his season of appearing. And one day he show up and oh my gosh, the rest was history. Thousands of people came to see him because the anointing of God was so self-evident in his life. Jesus was for 30 years in obscurity until one day John pointed him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. God sent me here to tell somebody today that has been in the cave feeding the bread with the bread, drinking the water, be in a place of isolation for preparation. God sent me here this morning to announce you, to let you know that there is a door that he's about to open to elevate you. Your season of elevation is about to happen and God is about to open a door. The camels are coming. The bounty carrier is coming. The one that carries the payment is coming. Doors are closed and sealed to add value to the product. But here's why you have to be very careful. Because sometimes what we do when we are in a closed door in a cave, and you know, you see Sister Wonderful, she just came to the church three months ago. She already found a man. And Lord, I've been here for five years in the cave why do i kept getting overlooked hello so now what we want to do is you know what i want to take matters in my own hand and open up the door and go out the problem is if you step out while god wants you to stay in you will step out before your time and you'll be seen before you're finished and you're not going to look like what you're supposed to look like. How many of you remember before photography went digital? Come on. Maybe some of you are too young to remember that. How many of you remember something called Kodak? So you had to take a picture and took the film to a film developer. And the developer took that film into a dark room and left it into some liquid to soak until the film was developed. But you had to let it go through a process of time. Now, what if it was like today, in this generation, you said to him, hey, sir, excuse me, film developer, I'm an Instagram star. I don't have the time for that. Give me the film. I'm going to post it because I'm addicted to like, 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 like. As a matter of fact, when I post my picture on Instagram, it's been one minute and I'm so discouraged and depressed because there's no like. Hello? Listen, you're not defined by the likes of many. You are defined by the love of the one who say, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will always be with you. Tell somebody, stay in the cave until your time of elevation comes how many of you know what American Idol is it was a show that came out years ago where contestants would come and perform songs based on their performance evaluation they were selected to go to the next level when American Idol this program came I turned in to watch and there was a, a gentleman that came to sing and he was convinced that he could sing. So he grabbed the microphone and started to sing. And they have a panel of judges. And there was a judge there. People didn't like him very much. much. His name was Simon Cal. He was brutally honest. He was not like very friendly, but he was just telling you the truth. When the person was singing, the guy was singing, Simon just pushed the, buzz, the buzzer. Bam. No, that's a no. But this guy would not quit singing. 
he kept singing the other judges say no nobody kept singing and Simon Cast said that's enough enough of that so this guy stepped in front of the judges there was a table they were sitting there and they had a glass of water there on the table he grabbed that water and poured it on the judge he was mad and here's what he said aloud in front of everybody on national television but my mama said I could sing have you ever watched that movie the water boy when Adam Sandler is a water boy his entire frame of reference about everything in life is my mama said is the devil everything that his mama said but my, mama, my, mama, my mama said it's the devil listen mama do what mama does mama's supposed to cheer my boy is the best singer in the whole world but be careful because this man found out on national television that not everybody listens to music with their womb some people actually use their ears to listen to music hello there was this lady that went to a prophetic conference she was there and she kept pressuring the leaders to let her sing she's like the lord gave me this song i'm supposed to release it on the on the conference and there will be a blessing i got this prophetic unction i'm supposed to sing she kept pressuring the leader so finally the leader said okay we're gonna let you sing and they gave her the microphone and she got up on the stage and she said y'all I just want you to know the Lord wanted me to release this song over you all. But as I was preparing to get up here, the devil told me I couldn't sing. And then she opened up her mouth to sing. And it seems like she just, it looks like she maybe she ate like four frogs just before she was going to grab that microphone. And those frogs were quacking while she was singing. She butchered that song. And it looks terrible. So she said, that said, y'all, I just wanted to release what the Lord wanted me to release. So the leaders got the microphone and said, Sister, if the devil told you you couldn't sing, that would be the first time he told the truth. <laughs> Tell somebody, stay in the cave. Oh my gosh, don't get out before your time. Hey, but when your time comes, when preparation meets opportunity, destiny will be born. Number four, doors are closed. Hello? Sometimes for preservation and protection. When Noah built the ark and obey God, after all the animals and all his family got in, the Bible says, God closed the door. Because if God did not close that door, even though Noah was in full obedience, they were all going to die. So that door was closed for protection and for preservation. Huh. The longer you live and walk with God, not only should you be thankful for open doors, you should learn how to be thankful for closed doors. Because sometimes when God closed the door, it was protection. Come on, some of you young people, you know, like in America, you know, football, American football is a very popular sport. And you know, so you're in, let's say you're in high school and, and, and you know, 17-year-old, 18-year-old, and the captain of the football team was in love with you. Oh, my gosh, captain of the football team, he likes me. Oh, Instagram selfie. Check, 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 check. Oh, my gosh. And then two weeks later, he dumps you like a bad habit. He's dating somebody else. And you're like, oh my gosh, it's the end of the world. My love, I feel so rejected. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I need, I need, I need, I need to take some medication. I, 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 need, I need some Prozac or something. I, 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 I'm so depressed right now. I mean, it's amazing. Listen, I'm not making fun of people with emotional uh, anxiety issues or whatever. But I, I saw a 13-year-old giving a testimony the other day. And she's like, you know, I'm 13 years old and I've been through so much in life. Hello? And sometimes we don't know how to put things in perspective. I'm not downplaying your issues. But fast forward, 25 years later, you are now married. We brought a wonderful He's not an athletic guy. He might look like a nerdy guy, but he has a good job. 
You and I are married with Brother Wonderful. You got three children because signs, wonders, a miracle, and you are happy now. And then you get news of the football star that dumped you when you were 18. Now he's serving a life sentence in the penitentiary because he, because he killed his last girlfriend. He broke the neck of his last two girlfriends, broke their arm. Hey, he looks like a gangster. And now you find out about this and you're like, Lord, I thank you. I'm so glad. I'm so happy that he dumped me like a bad habit. Hello? Some of the things that you're sad about right now because somebody rejected you, somebody didn't want to accept you. Listen, why do you worry about the fact that people don't like, some people don't want to accept you in the little cliques? You're like a square, they're a circle, you don't fit and you try to push and be accepted. Listen, sometimes rejection is protection. Sometimes rejection is redirection. Oh my gosh, don't lose your mind over the one that left you because you're going to need your mind for the one that God is sending. Don't lose your mind over the job that lets you go because you're going to need your mind for the business opportunity that God is going to send your way. Sometimes when God closes a door, a bigger and a better door will open. But you got to learn to understand the mystery behind closed doors. That some doors are closed for protection and redirection and preservation. Here's the thing. There are doors that you will have to close. Hello? If God deliver you from pornography, you need to close that door and make sure all your computers and your device have a monetary thing in there so you will not accidentally go back into it. We heard a story of a successful pastor that was delivered from drug and one day he had a bad day. He went back to the neighborhood where he used to take drug 30 years ago and fell back into it. Hello? So sometimes you are going to have to shut the door. Not God. You know what? I'm going to close this door. Friends that bring you to bad places, shut the door. People that lead you into bad avenue, shut the door. Places that are susceptible to make you fall in sin, don't go there. 99% of temptation sometimes is not going to the wrong places. Not watching the wrong thing. Not hanging around with the wrong crowd. Shut the door. There's an old song. Shut the door. Keep out the devil. Shut the door. Keep the devil in the night. Shut the door. You got to shut the door. Now listen. Lastly, some doors are closed as deliberate hindrance to stop the plan of God. Because the devil is trying to stop you from doing the will of God. Hello? Hello? The devil stopped Paul. He said, I wanted to come to you, but Satan hindered me. If Satan can hinder Paul, Satan can hinder you, can stop you. But the key to open this kind of door, it's supernatural power and it is the master key. And Jesus is the master key. I wonder if Mr. Amen has left the building. I'm almost done preaching. Jesus is the master key. Amen. I want you to realize that not too long ago, I went to preach a little bit outside of LA, Los Angeles, and the pastor came to pick us up. And somehow his wife was staying in the car. She was she accidentally got out, got out of the car, and the car was running, and the, the car was, was locked, and it was running. And the keys were inside. And so when we came out of the airport with the pastor, we had a bad situation. And the police was trying to get them to move the car. So they had a GMC truck. And back home, I drive a GMC truck. And I have a service on my truck called OnStar. Mm. And I called OnStar. And I said, 
we have a situation, someone is driving a GMC car and the keys are locked on the inside. They say, just give me the VN number. And we gave them the VN number. And they were able to open up the door. We talked to somebody somewhere that we didn't see but they had the master key and they were able to open a door that no man could open revelation chapter 3 says i hold the key of david and i open a door that no man can shut and shut a door that no man can open i want you to know that jesus christ is the master key hey he broke through the cross and broke the curse he broke through the grave and opened up the grave he broke through the heaven and he took you with him paul said i am crucified with christ it's no longer i will leave but christ will live in me he opened up the door of hell so you can get out he opened up the doors of heaven so you can get in he is the master key he said i am the way there's no going without me i am the truth there's no knowing without me i am the life there's no living without me jesus is the key to knowing the key to living the key to going to the resurrection power of god yes at christmas we marvel to see christ emerge from a womb Mm. at easter we marvel to see christ emerge from a tomb amen if christ can go from heaven to the womb from the womb to the tomb from the tomb to heaven and come back where else can he go in your life he is the master key I close this with a story. You know, my wife and I, we travel the world. And we do sometimes tour. In the pre-COVID days, you know, we, do, we stay in Asia for two months, three months. Fly to Japan, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Hong Kong, Taiwan, China, Philippines. And one of those trips, we flew from Dallas to Japan. That's like 14, 15 hours from Japan to Singapore. Another seven to eight hours. We got to Singapore late, like around one o'clock in the morning. We've been traveling for almost a day. So we got there. We were tired. Make a long story short. If you know something about Singapore, they don't have a lot of real estate. They don't have a lot of land. So when they build, all the buildings, most of the buildings are very, very high. So they put us in this room in this hotel. It's like they were preparing us for the rapture. Way up in heavenly places. So we got there. They gave me the keys. We were tired. And I tried to open the hotel door. When I tried to use the key, instead of getting a green light, I got a red and orange light. I kept doing this, repeating the process hoping that the door will open. But the door didn't open. The reason why I kept doing it is because I didn't want to go back down there in the heavenly, in, 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 earth, in earthly places. I didn't want to take that journey. I was tired. So finally, I came to the conclusion that the key is not working. So I was going to go back down to the front desk. Now, I'm tired. I've been traveling for a day. My wife is tired. And I started to develop an attitude. Why do you look at me so holy and sanctified when I'm trying to confess my sins? I, I was telling myself, I'm going to tell them. I want to tell that lady. I dare her she gave me a key that doesn't work. And I'm tired. So I, I came down there. I was having some attitude problems. I said, uh, excuse me, ma'am. You know, I've flown the last day. I've been on a plane for more than 24 hours. And we're tired. And you gave us a key that does not work. Can you please give me a key that works? My wife is up there. She's waiting. 
it's kind of frustrating that after all of that, I, I have a key that doesn't work and I have to go back up there and come back. So, I, you know, I told her, you know. So in Singapore, they speak, uh, they, they, someone that don't speak English, they're speaking what's called Sing English. Sing English is what, you know, that's second like name, nickname. When they speak, they add la at the end of every word, you know. So we had this beautiful Chinese looking sweet lady, five foot two, I'm six foot seven. She said to me, Mr. Pella, your key don't work la. Let me ask you a question, La. Do you have a cell phone in your pocket, La? Mr. Pay, did you put the key in your pocket, La? In the same pocket where you had telephone. And I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? She said, Mr. Pay, you put the key next to your telephone, La. And your telephone deactivate, demagnetize the key, La. Okay, la. No problem, la. I give, I make new key for you, la. But this time, make sure that you don't put the key in the same pocket where you got your cell phone, la. And I said, okay, la. She took me to school. Six foot seven, got eggs on my face. Psh! I was going to try to tell her. Let me translate what she was saying. Mr. Paid, la. There's nothing wrong with our system, la. We got a master key, la. We got technology, la. Problem with you. You brought something with you that's wrong, la. That's why a key doesn't work for you, la. So if I say Jesus is the master key, how come Christians don't see the master key opening doors? It is just like me. Sometimes we have something in our lives that deactivate the key. Sometimes it's pride. Sometimes it's private sin, secret sin. Sometimes it is attitude. Let's stand up. It is all kinds of things that stops the key from working. Pray for me, Pastor. Pray for me. Pray for me. Ah, I've been really struggling. You know, sometimes we want to use prayer like magic. I believe in miracles. I'm using the area of miracles strongly. But miracles are not magic. Hello? So when you don't want to get your life right with God, when you want to continue to play games, and then it's almost like you want to use prayer like a magic trick in Jesus' name. Whoosh! God said no. The lack of humility subtract artificial humility detract sincere humility attract humility is the low road to new height and god said he resists the proud and give grace to the humble humble yourself under the hand of the lord and he will lift you up sometimes your pride will make that the key doesn't work hello sometimes we just walk in full disobedience he said, if you're faithful and obedient, you will eat the fruits of the land. Sometimes we're not faithful. Sometimes we're not obedient. Hello? I want to encourage you today on this Easter Sunday. Jesus is the master key. There are no doors in Canada that cannot be opened by the power of God. Hello? Hello? He said, I hold the key of David. I open a door that no man can shut. And shut the door that no man can open. The other side of it is, I shut the door that no man can open. So if, if, if God is resisting you, I don't care if you take 10,000 prayer warriors to pray for you. That is not going to change until you repent. You can go talk to Jonah if you want to. I don't care if you, you, you're even taller than me. No matter how strong your hands are, your hands cannot be long enough to box with God. God will always win. So the quickest way to victory is surrender. Hello? So I just want to lead you very quickly. We have a second service. I could do more ministry, but we have a second service and my time is gone. 
And sometimes it's like in our, in our, in our, in our houses, apartments, when we have guests, we only invite them to the living room. We don't invite them to other rooms. And sometimes that's what we do with God. We let God in one area and not on the other. But he said, behold, I stand and knock. If you open, if you open the door. So very quickly, if you, today, if you just want to say, Lord, I just want to surrender to you. I want the master key to work for me. Whatever is stopping the key from working. Today, I just want to, I just want to lay it down before you. Just raise your hand if that's you. You want to say, I just want to surrender. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hands towards heaven. Say this with me. Say, Father God. Go on prayer light. Say, Father God. Father God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I surrender all. I surrender all. I want to take the master key. I want to take the master key. I let go. I let go. Of things that stop the master key. Of things that stop the master key. From working. From working. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. That Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ. Is my Lord and Savior. Is my Lord and Savior. My King. I repent. I repent. I say sorry, Lord, for the things I've done. I say sorry, Lord, for the things I've done. I put you in the center of my life. I put you in the center of in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to pray for open doors. Listen, there's an anointing on this. I'm going to pray for open doors. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus today for open doors. As your people have aligned themselves with you. I want to decree and declare that the camels are coming. The bounty carrier is coming. Amen. The one who carry the reward is coming. The one who brings the payment is coming. Those that are in situation where they have been stuck. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy and say, move north. Move north. Amen. Or the centurion servant said, uh, he said, I'm not worried that you should come to my house. Only speak and, uh, and, and, and my servant will be healed. Some of you have been speaking to things and then I refuse to obey your voice. I join my faith with your faith today. Whatever needs to leave your life, I command it to go. Whatever needs to come into your life, I command it to come. In the name of Jesus, the wise man followed the stars. There was a star in the sky that they follow. That speaks of visibility. In the name of Jesus. Oh, but if the weather was bad, they could not see it. Whatever is hiding your visibility, so that people who have the leverage and the credibility to bless you cannot see you. I speak to that visibility. I say right now in the name of Jesus, may God cause your star to shine. May those who have the power to bless you see you. Oh, when those that saw Esther love her. May those who see you today love you in the name of Jesus. May those who have the resources and the power to bless you, see you, and bless you. Like Pharaoh sent for Joseph. And Joseph came out of prison. And 25 years of limitation was destroyed in his life. He experienced breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, may God honor you with grace and favor. May he lift you from zero to breakthrough. I pray for this ministry. May God expand your burial. Years. May God expand your horizon. May God expand your coast. I prophesy a lifting up. May God lift you up in this season. I prophesy that this year will be the best year of your life. I say open doors. Favor with men, with God. In the name of Jesus, may God open up the door of healing. May you receive healing in your body, healing in your mind. May God open doors of provision. May you receive favor with men, with God. I speak and prophesy new platform, new money, new connection, new doors. In the name of Jesus, we declare Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works inside of you. In Jesus' name, can you shout hallelujah? Can you shout amen? amen? God bless you. Hallelujah.